The Indiana Pacers are interesting to me. Uh, I'm curious yes. about them because th on one hand, all of the conversation about the Eastern Conference power structure has been about who can topple Boston, the Knicks being a reloaded team after their offseason moves, the Sixers being, you know, having the tailor-made central casting big three with Paul George there. What are the Bucks, you know, wither a year two of Doc and Giannis and, and Dame together? And it's like we forgot that the team that played in the Eastern Conference Finals is also coming back. <laughs> yeah. um, my So here, what I'm curious about is what does the encore look like, right? Is it possible that this Pacers team isn't, I mean, I think the glass half empty view is, are they the 2021 Hawks, right? Where they rode a great offense and some lucky breaks in terms of matchups to a conference finals berth. And then like that, set an unreasonable level of expectations for them. And that's possible. But it's the beginning of September, so let's be optimists and look at the glass half full and say, why are they not going to be like a 50-plus win team? The last time we saw Tyrese Halliburton healthy, he was maybe the best offensive player in the NBA who wasn't uh, Nikola Jokic. They got as far as they got with a half season of Pascal Siakam and a half season of Halliburton on one leg. They... Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's backcourt depth. There's youth to be sort of excited about. Um, I don't know where where are you on the Pacers as we enter into this uh, this new season? I am not judging them like a typical conference finalist. Like I I don't want to say they're the Hawks because that feels derogatory. Um, right. But parentheses also... derogatory as opposed to par uh, parentheses <laughs> complimentary. Yeah, um, but I do. Like, I'm encouraged by what we saw. Like, the, the Siakam move, um, I think, works beautifully for them in the second half of the season. Probably became more important um, than they even realized it would be just because Halliburton never quite got back to what he was right. early in the year. Even though he had some incredible games in the playoffs, mm -hmm. um, I think it was just, it was huge for them to be able to have somebody else who could create, somebody especially who could create out of ISO, yeah. which is not even like Halliburton's main strength, right? Like he's an incredible pick and roll guy, a, like really great creator, a guy that completely kind of changes um, just sort of the feel and the flow of your offense and does so much for you in transition. But Halliburton isn't like your typical one-on-one -on -one creator type. And Pascal, I mean, like the shots he was making in the playoffs, like he was being efficient on like a superstar shot diet, like making a ton of contested mid-range jumpers, like just like tough twos and hitting big shots when, when they needed them. Like I, I thought that worked out really well. Um, the defense improved after that trade. Um, I think the big thing this year is... Are we assuming they're going to be a historically great offense again? Halliburton's going to be this all NBA guy again um, from the jump. If, if we sort of give them that, then I think there is a big opportunity for them to be, you know, maybe a low 50s win team somewhere in there um, if the defense improves. Last year, they ran kind of a crazy defense where um, it was sort of a gimmick, right? Like they didn't want to give up any threes and they were like effective at doing that. Um, but teams were just getting to the basket and scoring. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. And you know, th there was some improvement in the second half of the season, but like with a full training camp um, with kind of, you know, an understanding of what they did last year and like a collective sort of, all right, this is going to be our formula this year. Um, where they emphasize a little bit more. I think we could, I, I'm assuming we're going to see a different defensive game plan for one. Um, and then we just have to see what it looks like in terms of the actual execution of it. Um, Miles Turner, a couple of years ago, we talked about him like an all defense candidate, like even a defensive player of the year candidate. He was giving quotes about how it was unfair that he never actually got real buzz for, for that award. And like, look at the stats and all that stuff. And like, you know, like that was, you know, valid. He was an incredible defender. I don't think he was an incredible defender last year. I don't think anyone on that team was, even though there are some guys individually who are good defenders. Um, but can he get back to that level? Um, can they, you know, still be uh, like able to, you know, take away threes and like without just making it that that red carpet to the rim? Like, I, I want to see what they do on that end. Um, and I want to see, you know, like... 
This is a team that has a couple of guys who were either in the mix or like not like Ben Matherin is an important part of that team who we just didn't see because he was hurt at the end of the year. Yeah. I want to see Tor- how he Torn grows. Labrum missed like the last three weeks and then the whole playoffs. Yeah. And he was the guy previous to Siakam that they would actually like kind of give the ball to and say, get us a bucket a lot of the time when they needed it. Like he is a very talented one on one player, but like the flaws are well documented, too, in terms of the feel, in terms of playmaking for others, in terms of just general defensive awareness and commitment and all of that. So, right. like, we'll see where, where he grows. And and then Jairus Walker is a guy that like NBA nerds like like you and me, like. We're all pretty much in on him. Like, if, if you say that you're not interested in what Jairus Walker does next year, I will be shocked because, I mean, <laughs> he has all of the tools and you watch him in Summer League or like G League highlights or whatever. Like, you you can see the vision. Um, but if he is strictly a four, then when does he even get in there now that, like, you know, they have Pascal and they, they brought Toppin back. So, like, I have questions, but I'm certainly not going into the year thinking, all right, if they're a first round out, it's like some sort of you know, massive failure or anything like that. Right. The progress isn't linear and it might, you know, they could be, as you mentioned with Houston, they could be qualitatively better, but maybe not dramatically improved in the win total or in terms of their postseason, uh, you know, equity. Uh, well, now I have to go ahead and cross out the portion of this that was about Jarius Walker. Uh, sorry. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> it's just in order to, to, to not look that, that much pretty, like I'm a predictable nerd. Um, but yeah, no. I mean, they, they they do need a versatile defensive four. Um, and it's uh, it's also <laughs> worth noting that, uh, I don't know if this is worth noting or not, but I'm going to note it. Every time I look at him, I think he's sort of like young Paul Millsap with a wig on. So I'm like, uh, you know, <laughs> it, like dimensionally and structurally, like it makes a ton of sense. He's huge. He's massive. He's absolutely huge. And he moves way, way better than a guy that big has any right to. But you're yeah. right. He might not, he might not have much room to move behind Pascal Siakam and Obi Toppin in, in that front court, especially now that, you know, with Miles Turner there and Isaiah Jackson, they bring in James Wiseman. There's all like a lot of guys for those front court minutes. They're deep in weird ways, sort of all over the place. They've got maybe the deepest backcourt in the league. You bring back Nemhart on the extension. You bring back, you extend it to TJ McConnell, but, you know, multiple ball handlers that can do stuff. The wing, the defensive component that I'm interested in, and they were, I think, 20th on the defensive end after the All-Star break. So not good, but if you are like, approaching mediocre with the offense they can have yeah i think there's a real chance there and you remove like halliburton's gonna get hunted and they're gonna go with that like you know steph style high tag switch you know show and recover kind of defense to try to get him out of harm's way moving off of buddy healed elevating ben shepherd i think made them more stable in some you know they gave them some more flexibility and just some more like size and width and length and aptitude as sorry yeah. as far as like wing defenders if Matherin can take a step there, you Aaron Neesmith is an absolute, you know, just like a bull there. There's <laughs> more guys who can do stuff defensively at the risk of sounding, you know, really high end uh, analysis. There's more guys who can <laughs> do stuff and who have like big wide bodies with arms that are longer. Um, maybe not all wing sized wings, right? Like, the you know, the, the perfect central casting three to guard an opponent's number one perimeter scoring option. But. It feels like there's some more, you know, uh, options in the cupboard for Rick Carlisle on that staff to come up with something. And I just I really think there's a chance. I mean, obviously, Tyrese Halliburton didn't get a whole heavy workload with uh, Team USA this summer. So maybe he's coming in rested no. and ready. <laughs> um, but I think that there's a chance that if he is this it, if the start of the season, if he's healthy enough to be, you know, with the back issues he had, with the hamstring issues he had, those things can linger. If he's right at the beginning of the season and they've got the full complement of of training camp and everything to sort of iron out some of the wrinkles, how he and how and uh, Siakam work together, how Siakam and Turner work together defensively, schematically. I think there's a chance this team could be awesome. And yeah, they maybe they it's they they get a little bit le- uh, left by the wayside because they didn't make big splash acquisitions in the summertime like some of those other teams that we talked about. But I think we ignore them at our, our own peril because the the I think the fundamentals of what they showed seem stronger to me than, yeah. you know, insert that, you know, that Blazers team a few years ago, that Hawks team, like these sort of one and done teams. Maybe they don't get back to the Eastern Conference finals, but I think they're going to be heard from before all is said and done. Uh, James, we're yeah. going to take a, we're going to take a quick break to pay some bills with some ads, and then we're going to be right back with some more no cap room and some more teams that we are curious about. Stick with us. 